here and I am ready to begin our demonstration of depression era chocolate cake that I promised you we would make in class but that's obviously not going to happen so it's something that I'm going to demonstrate and then you are going to do that again at home for your family. First of all depression cake is named because it was eaten in hard times during America's history during World War II and the Great Depression because it doesn't uh, doesn't contain any dairy products. It doesn't have eggs or butter or milk in it and sometimes called crazy or miracle cake because it all happens to other types of sciences because this is a food science class. So we're going to go over that in pretty good detail. We are going to begin with a little demonstration. This experiment we're going to show how vinegar reacts with baking soda because we're going to be using baking soda to leaven this cake. Normally you would use eggs to leaven the cake but we're not using those today so we're going to use baking soda and vinegar and it's going to cause a reaction as all of you know from making volcanoes when you were little kids and it's going to cause a large amount of bubbles to come up and that's going to create the um, the lift to the cake instead of eggs or yeast or baking soda or baking powder so there's two types of leveling agents that are powder that we have talked about uh, we're going to be using baking soda today but there is also baking powder and they are different because baking soda is sodium benzoate. Baking powder has sodium benzoate but it also has an added acid to the formula so that you have a reaction that's happening while the cake is cooking. This reaction with baking soda and vinegar happens exactly when the liquids and the dry ingredients mix. And because of that, when we make this recipe, we need to separate the dry ingredients from the wet ingredients. Okay, so you ready to get started on this? Okay, so I have my recipe right here. I'm going to send you a recipe so you can either watch along or later go online and find that, that recipe. And so let's begin. So the first thing you do when you're cooking is you wash your hands, especially in these times. I've already washed my hands, so that's done. The next thing you want to do is you want to put on the oven so it is warm enough by the time you've finished preparing the cake. I've already put my oven on, it's on at 350. And also you need to prepare your baking, your baking dish. We need an eight by eight dish with this, okay, nice square. And I've already prepared it by spraying it with vegetable spray and then powdering it with a little bit of flour. So you put the flour in there and then you dump out the excess in the sink. And this is what it should look like and it's all ready to go because when you add your dry and liquid ingredients, you wanna quickly get it in this pan, okay, for all, before all the fun begins. Okay, so uh, the first part of the instructions, uh, we are going to sift together the dry ingredients. So I'm gonna take a big bowl here. I have two ways I can sift. I have this old timey crank operated uh, sifter here. I love the cranking motion. I'm probably going to be using that for the uh, sifter uh, of the flour. And also you have this one you can use. You can simply use this by putting your dry ingredients in here and banging it like this and eventually, eventually it all comes out. The reason that we want to sift these ingredients, the dry ingredients, is because we're not going to be using a mixer. And we're not going to be necessarily using a big spoon. We're only going to be using a fork because we don't want to mix it too much because we don't want the bubbles to, to start exploding out until we get it in the oven so it can make it raise right in the oven. So it's kind of a gradual mixing that we want to do. So the first ingredient we're going to add is the flour. It calls for one and a half cups. So I'm just going to take my sifter, put it right in the bowl. And I'm going to take my one cup. Whoop. This is why you don't wear black when you're making a cake. I got my one cup. And I'm putting it in here. Then I'm going to take my half a cup because it's one and a half cups. I'm just going to dip it in here very gently. I like to mound a big hill here. And just give it a little tap. Let it settle. And then push it off like this. Nice and neat. That goes in here too. And the next ingredient is a cup of sugar. I'm going to add that to the sifter too. It's all going to be uh, nice and finely dissolved inside this, this mix. So that is one cup. So I'm just going to dip this in. And of course, sugar is a lot easier to me measure because 
it's not fluffy, it's very heavy. I'm gonna pour that in. Okay, it's getting kind of full, so I might want to start cranking a little bit. So I still have some other ingredients I wanna add. And the next one is the good stuff. This is the chocolate part. This is cocoa powder. It's unsweetened. This is 100% cacao. I have a lot of chocolate ingredients in my house. Uh, as you know, I like chocolate, so I have many different varieties of the same thing. So sometimes they're old, sometimes they're new. Okay. I'm gonna use this one today because this is Ghirardelli, so it's probably gonna be a better quality. Okay, it is not sweet, it is unsweetened. We added a cup of sugar, so uh, we don't need to sweeten it anymore. We're just gonna add this. So this recipe calls for three tablespoons of cocoa butter. And I'm going to use my nice tablespoon measure here. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just put it in and flatten it in the box or in the bag like that. One. Two, three, and then I'm going to add my baking soda, the magic ingredient. One teaspoon. So here we go. I'm going to flatten that at the top so it's nice and level. Remember when you're, when you're baking things, the uh, the amount of the, uh, of the ingredients, the weight, and the measurements are very important in baking. Not so much in making a sauce uh, that you can fool around with and taste it and compare it and, and add ingredients with it. Baking, your, your proportions have to be exact, as exact as you can make them. The last ingredient in the powder, dry ingredients, is going to be a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then comes time to carefully set this through. Can you see that? Sometimes when I use this, the uh, flour comes flying out of this. Watch out. You're going to get to the end, and you're going to get some little remnants that would are, which are solid. It's actually turned up pretty good. If you get some big pieces of cocoa, you can push it down. Okay. And then we're all done with that. So now we have our dry ingredients. I'm gonna stir it around a little bit so it's a little bit more uniform. Okay, and those are our dry ingredients. So now we can move on to the wet ingredients. I'm gonna get a different bowl, keep them all separate. Okay, I need one tablespoon of white vinegar. One tablespoon of white vinegar. So, as we know in class, the white vinegar is what we use with baking. We're not gonna use apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar with a baking goods because we don't want it to impart a, a, any different flavor. We wanna have a nice clean flavor so you can taste the cocoa. So I'm going to pour this in a separate bowl because it's very difficult to pour one tablespoon of this into a tablespoon. We know this, so it's easier if you put it into a different container and then you put this in here. Now you have your one tablespoon. That goes right in there. Okay. Uh, next ingredient is going to be one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. So I'm going to get my vanilla. And I, I'm sure you all know this trick. One teaspoon of vanilla is about a cap full. So just so I don't have to dirty another measuring spoon, I'm just going to pour it in like that. Okay. And our last ingredient for the, the wet ingredients uh, is the vegetable oil. When you use vegetable oil on, in baking goods, you don't want to use olive oil or savory um, oils. You want to use vegetable oil. So this is a corn, corn oil, it's a vegetable. You can always use canola, that has a very clean flavor. This calls for six tablespoons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my favorite measuring device that can measure large amounts of tablespoons. And I'm gonna find, let's see, six tablespoons. And I'm going to measure it without having to use a little spoon. And I'm gonna pour it in here. And now we have our wet ingredients, and that's all of them. Okay. There's one more ingredient you're gonna add. You need to be careful not to miss this because uh, it's at the bottom of the, uh, of the recipe and it is a one cup of plain water. This is the last thing you're gonna add. 
but you don't add it until you have added these ingredients together. So here are my dry ingredients. Okay, and I'm going to add the liquid to the dry ingredients. That's easier to do. And I'm going to get out my fork here, and I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And I'm just going to pour that in. Okay. I'm going to stir it a little bit. And obviously, I'm going to need more liquid here. And this is where the water comes in. I'm going to take this water and pour it in. And then I'm going to stir it together. This was a favorite uh, recipe of, of my family when we were growing up. My brothers used to make this a lot because you can make it without using a mixer. You don't have to use uh, so many pots and pans that you have to clean. In fact, you can eat this right out of the uh, of the pan you're going to cook it in. So you can uh, cut the pieces and they come right out. So I can see here I still have some lumps, even though we sifted. I'm just going to do this. We're trying not to overmix it. Okay. And after a while, you've done about what you can do with a fork. Okay, you can't get too far with the fork. And I really want to get this in the oven. So I'm going to move with using a spatula, a soft spatula. Get this off. And I'm going to try to get the remnants of the powder around it very carefully. <laughs> and that looks, it should look about like this. You might not be able to get all the lumps out, but they will probably work themselves out in the oven. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to get my pan here. I am going to pour it in. So that was pretty easy. This is something you can do on your own. You're going to have mom or dad help you with the oven and getting the cake in and out of the oven without hurting yourself. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's a nice milk chocolatey color right now, but when it comes out, it's going to be a very dark chocolate. I can hardly wait. So I'm going to put it in the oven and I will see you in 30 minutes. A few moments later. Alrighty, so uh, while our cake is cooking, I am going to show you the demonstration of our baking soda. And we're going to do a comparison on uh, the age of the baking soda. Okay. The baking soda age or the expiration date is very important for both this and baking powder. If you have old baking powder or soda, you're just not going to get the, the lift in your, in your baking products. So uh, if you are going to use a recipe, it's best to check for the use by date to make sure that it's in date. Otherwise, you need to go buy some more because it's not worth ruining this, all this hard work you've done on your cake or your biscuits or whatever. So what I'm doing is I, I placed some baking soda right here, the same amount. This is the old bake, this is the new baking soda, and this is the old baking soda. And I've measured out the same amount of vinegar, uh, two ounces each. And we're gonna see a comparison. I put them in these fancy glasses because um, they'll, they'll create a really cool reaction. And I know you guys like that. So let's get started on this. You ready? Hopefully you can see this. Here we go. You know, very close, very close. This one was a little faster. I'm a little surprised. This was a little faster, and this was just barely behind. So it still works. It still works, but nevertheless, always use uh, the, uh, the powder or the baking soda that is in, within the date. All right, so I've taken the cake out of the oven and let it set for uh, 30 minutes. I had to go ahead and add about five or six minutes to the baking because when I first looked at it, it was a little wiggly and um, I added five minutes and then checked it with a toothpick and it looked good. So you might need to add some more time to your baking. Uh, so here it is. It's a lot darker than it was before. And now I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the pan. If you want, you can undo it and take it out, but you don't really need to because 
when you cut into it, it comes right away from the pan. You can actually serve it from the pan. Now at this point, you can add frosting. You can frost it. Uh, but what I like to do is, because it's so rich, I'm just going to add some powdered sugar to it. I'm going to um, sprinkle it on and make it kind of fancy. And what you can do to make it even fancier is you can take shapes. For instance, I have these old fashioned cookie cutters and I can place them on here. If you notice the stars is not proportional to the moon, okay, it's not real accurate as far as science and astronomy goes, but we'll give it that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get some powdered sugar confectionery sugar, and you're going to add it, place it inside the seed, only need to get about a tablespoon. So go like this, this is the fun part, you have to shake it out, and you can make it as thick as you want, okay. and if we did this right, we should have, you should have a little design there. And you can make your own designs. You can cut paper shapes shapes out. Just make sure it's clean. Um, or anything you can find. Maybe your initials. And um, it makes a really pretty presentation. And then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go ahead and try to cut it. Let's see how we do. I've already kind of cut around the sides to release it. But you just literally just run it through. I'm run it through once. And then I'm going to take a little piece here, and I'm just going to pop it out. There we go. Comes out perfectly. It's really a, a, a cake that you can't make a mistake with. And let's see how moist it is. Oh, it smells so good. It doesn't taste like vinegar. And I'm going to eat it in front of you. Mmm. Mmm. It tastes just like I remember it. Okay, so what I want you to do is, when you have your vacation time, this is an optional a recipe you can try, but you can also try another recipe I'm going to send that instead of using vinegar as its acid, uses tomato soup. There's another recipe where you can use Coca-Cola instead of vinegar, and that is acidic too because it has phosphoric acid in it. So I want to send you three different recipes and kind of try them out you should have most of the ingredients for this one in your house, except for maybe the cocoa powder. And um, you might have the tomato can soup already as well. So uh, use your imagination, be creative, cook for your family, and show them what you can do. Bye-bye.